Hi everybody, welcome to the Digital Life and in this video I want to show you how to make your Windows subsystem for Linux terminal just awesome. And awesome means two important things for me. First it needs to have a nice look and feel, so we will change the default colors, the default font and so on. And second, it also needs to have a nice functionality. So to do that we will install Windows Terminal, which is a nice open source project of Microsoft, which is a modern and nice terminal with some great functionalities. And we will also install ZSH shell on the Linux operating system that will replace our default bash shell. So with ZSH you can customize a lot of things, you can completely change the look and the behavior of your shell. And we will also have a look at some ZSH basics, so how to customize that and how to install plugins to enhance the functionality of your terminal. Some of these things will also apply on Linux or macOS operating systems, especially the ZSH shell, which is commonly used there. But there are a few things and a few steps you need to do in order to make it work properly with Windows and Windows subsystem for Linux. So don't worry, I will walk you step by step through the whole installation and configuration. I also have a small special for you because I will share my personal configuration of Windows Terminal and also the ZSH. So if you want to know that, if you want to have a look at that, keep watching and we will start right now. Okay guys, so before we start, I want to tell you, whenever I create a new tutorial or how-to on YouTube, I will also write a blog article that I will upload on my homepage. So whenever you are searching for a specific command I'm using in this tutorial, or a link to a documentation or something else, you can just have a look at the description of this video and find the link to my written blog article. There you can look up all the resources, all the commands that I'm using and you can just copy and paste them. Okay, so to do a short demonstration, I have installed a new Windows 10 virtual machine and I've also installed the Windows subsystem for Linux in version one. So all of these things will also apply to Windows subsystem for Linux in version two. So that really doesn't make any difference. I've just installed it on this machine and when we open the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can see this is the default terminal. I mean, this is working somehow, but it really doesn't look nice. It doesn't have any advanced functionality for a terminal application and it really looks boring. So let's try to transform this boring terminal into something more sophisticated. And we will start with the installation of the Windows Terminal. So Windows Terminal is an open source project of Microsoft and it is a modern and nice terminal application. To install that, that is very easy. Just open the Microsoft Store and search for Windows Terminal. I was following this project for some time, even when it was in the preview version. Now they released the version one, so that is actually a final stable version and it's really nice. They already have announced to improve the functionalities based on community feedback. You can also follow this project on GitHub. Let me just download this software and show it to you. Okay, so I have now downloaded it. Let's pin this to the taskbar. And when you first open the Windows Terminal, it will open with a default shell and that is the PowerShell. But you can also open different terminals or shells when you click on the arrow here. And you can see you can select a usual command prompt, an Ubuntu shell and also the Azure Cloud shell. So when you click on Ubuntu, it's just starting the Windows subsystem for Linux and opens a terminal. So that actually looks exactly the same like the default terminal, but the Windows terminal offers you some features like the tabbing or also some tiling windows that you can just open and do things in parallel. So that is really useful, I think. And you can also customize this application a lot. So let me show you how to do that. Just click on the arrow and click on settings. So now a JSON file will open and you can open this with any text editor. Now let me just open this with a notepad text editor and you can see this is a configuration file of the Windows Terminal. So if you want to change anything in here, you can add changes to the default section so that will apply to all profiles or you can make changes only to specific terminal profiles. Note, you shouldn't change that identifier here because that is unique for your system. So don't overwrite this ID, otherwise you will break the uh, Windows Terminal and that doesn't really work. <laughs> okay, 
So we will have a look at this later. So first I want to replace the default and boring bash terminal shell in the Windows operating system and replace this with the ZSH terminal. So DSH is a nice terminal, you can change the look and feel of it, you can also install custom themes uh, where you can actually customize every single bit of this stuff. And I want to install the basic ZSH shell, but let's do this step by step. So first we need to install a different font that will render some nice icons for us. So to do that go to the homepage nerdfonts.com and you can see these fonts actually consist of some icons. These are called power line symbols and also other things. So they are really cool and have a nice look and feel. To do that, go to the download section and then you can basically just select a font you like. So note that not all of them work very well with uh, the ZSH uh, theme I'm downloading later. But uh, for example, I'm using the Anormize nerd font here, but you can also try out different fonts. So let's just try this Droid Sans Mono Nerd font. Click on download and just open the folder. So now we need to extract the archive, extract all, extract. And then we need to install all of these fonts in the Windows system so that the Windows terminal will actually be able to render these fonts. Click on install. And once they are installed, you can select one and you need to note this name here. We will need to use this name later in the configuration file. So write this down. Okay, now we need to install ZSH on our Windows subsystem for Linux. To do that, first update all your package sources. I also have some packages that can be upgraded, but I will do this later. Just install sudo apt install zsh dash y and hit enter. So this will install the zsh shell. And once this is installed, we need to replace our default bash shell with a new zsh shell we have just installed. This can be easily done by installing the oh my zsh extension. To do that, just copy this command here. You can find it on my written blog article and hit enter. So this is just cloning the oh my zsh git repository in your personal folder. Once you have done that, it will ask us, do you want to change your default shell to zsh? Just enter yes. And we will need to enter our password here. And now this is installed. So this is an easy method to customize the ZSH shell. Because when you have just installed ZSH, it really doesn't look nice. So this is just the default look and feel of this ZSH shell. So this is almost more boring than the default bash, I would say. But you can customize almost everything with it. To do that, we will install a custom theme that will change the complete look and behavior of this. To do that, just enter this command here. You can also find this in my written blog article and hit enter. So this is cloning the power level 10K uh, theme for the ZSH terminal. Now we need to replace our default theme with the new power level 10K. To do that, we need to edit the ZSH RC file in our personal folder. Just open a text editor, I'm using Vim. But you can also use nano if you're not familiar with uh, Vim or something else, of course. And edit in your personal folder the file .zshrc. So when we open this file, here's basically our configuration. And you can see in the second configuration line here, the zsh theme, there is the default one. Robbie Russell is the default theme. So uh, let's replace this with a power level 10k theme. If you have downloaded and installed power level in a different folder, you of course need to specify this folder here. So let's write this file. And now we need to reload the terminal. So I'm just exiting it and start a new Ubuntu terminal. And when you have changed the theme and started this the first time, there is a configuration wizard. So now you can adjust the fonts and check if everything is all right, but you can see 
Does it look like a diamond? No, not really. That is because the Windows Terminal doesn't render the font that DSH is or Power Level 10 is using in this terminal. So we need to change the Windows Terminal configuration and change the default font to the nerd font we have just installed. To do that, um, just let's quit this window here. So. So if you have done something wrong, you can just reset this and start the configuration with it again. Let me also show that later. First, let's go to the settings file and open this with a text editor. And now we need to replace the default font in our Ubuntu profile. So to do that, just add a new line here and type in font face. And now we need to put in the name, the exact name we have just looked up in the nerd font. So this is Droid Sans Mono Nerd Font. So don't put a comma at the end, so the last line doesn't need to contain a comma, otherwise you will get an error. Let's save this. And now you can see a lot of things have changed. So this is actually looking a bit better now. You can also customize this. Let's just restart the configuration wizard of Power Level 10. To do that, just enter P10K. And you can see with the configure uh, parameter, we can run the interactive configuration wizard again. You can do this all the time when you want to change the look and feel of this theme. So let's just do that with configure. Uh, I should write it correctly, of course. Okay, so this now looks like diamond. So we can just hit enter. Uh, yes. Does this look like a lock? I think yes. So we enter yes. This is a logo. So that can now happen. So some of these logos actually doesn't fit very well, but I found out that really doesn't make any difference. So. We can just enter yes or no that I, I didn't had any issues with that. So now we can choose uh, do we want the classic look, the rainbow look and so on. You can really use anything you want. I mean I like the rainbow most and uh, this here the Unicode and no extra time. Uh, but you can do anything you like. I'm using the slanted here and the sharp one here. Uh, I like it this way. Let's just configure that. Now you can configure two lines or one lines. If you see that in some terminals, some people are using these two lines uh, look, but I don't like it so much. I'm using just one line and a compact view. And I like many icons. I think that really looks nice. And let's hit the one for Conkeyes. And now you can basically just change the look and feel if you want to uh, place this on every line or just when you're entering a command. I'm saying no because I like that look the most. Just have a look at the different options and select whatever you like or what makes more sense for you. But this configuration wizard is really nice. Apply changes to ZSHRC, yes, so you need to do that. And you can see now this look has changed to whatever we have configured here. But the default colors actually doesn't look nice, to be honest. So to change the color schemes, you also need to do this in the Windows Terminal. So just go to Settings, open this with a notepad, and at the end you see something like this here, add color schemes to this array. So now you need to define all color schemes yourself. Uh, but as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I already have installed a theme and color scheme that you can use. So just open this git repository here, xi2k.files, and you can find all my configuration files. So I will add much more here. So I've just added the Windows Terminal configuration files I'm using. But yeah, I try to extend that in the future so to make anything available to you. So just have a look at the settings.json and this is my configuration file I'm currently using so you can also see I've done some customizations to the shell to make it uh, transparent. So let's also copy these uh, things and we need to place them 
here. So in this uh, Windows subsystem for Linux part here, make sure you remove the comma at the end, otherwise it will break. And now when you scroll down, you can also find my default color schemes I've created myself. So that was a lot of work to find out all the colors. And probably I will also do some adjustments to them in the future. Just copy everything and put this into the color scheme. So hit and enter. And you also need to make sure that you follow the correct syntax. So remove the comma at the end. Uh, but that should work fine. So the name of our color scheme is XZ. Uh, just copy this and you can also add this to the Ubuntu terminal here. So just type in color scheme XZ and save this file. So now you can see the colors have changed and that is basically what I'm using in my default uh, Windows operating system for my Windows subsystem for Linux in version 2. So that is basically the same configuration. So what is not working is a transparent look here because this is a virtual machine and that probably is because of these graphics drivers issues. But I can show you this on my Windows operating system where I've set it up the same way. So this is how it looks on my main operating system. So when I exit this here. So on my main Windows operating system it has this transparent look. So what I've also changed is this icon here and let me show you how to do that because you can replace these icons with custom ones as well if you want to do that. Just go back to our test system. To change the default icon you need to open your user folder. So go to users, your username, then go to the app data folder, local, and search for packages. And then you need to search for Microsoft Windows Terminal. So it should be somewhere here. Here, my, uh, Microsoft Windows Terminal, open this. And then you can go to the roaming state folder. And I've just downloaded a simple terminal. I can put this here. And now let's copy the name of this here. Coach-terminal.png. To change that icon, just enter a new line. And enter icon ms-appdata. Make sure these are three slashes, roaming, and put in the name of the icon. Click on save, and you can see here's our new icon. So this is just a default one. You can also change the name of this here. So when you change the name to this here and save this, you see, you can just customize anything here. So it's really nice. So now our terminal just looks better. If we now open a new tab, you can see the PowerShell is still our default. To change that, just go to the configuration file copy the identifier of your Windows subsystem for Linux profile and put this into the default profile here. Just click on save and let's just close the complete terminal application and open this again. And you can see it's now starting with a Windows subsystem for Linux shell as a default one. And that actually looks much better than our boring default terminal. On your system, you probably will also have the transparent look. I unfortunately cannot show here, but well, it's much better than the default terminal. So we have changed the look and feel of this, but I've also promised you to change the behavior. So increase the functionalities with custom plugins. And ZSH has a lot of great plugins already uh, built into the Oh My ZSH. Um, configuration uh, application. So let's go to our personal folder and enter the dash all my zsh folder. And if we enter ls, you can see all these folders. Let's go to the plugins folder and hit ls. You can see there are a lot of um, plugins you can enable. So if you want to enable anything here, you can just use the name and open your zshrc file and 
When you scroll down, there is this here, plugins equal, and then it's loading the git plugin by default. And if you enter a space, you can enter much more uh, plugins here that are loaded when this terminal opens. So that is really nice. Let me also show you how to install custom plugins because these are just the default ones that comes with the OhMyZSH shell, but I've also found a nice plugin that adds a better autocomplete functionality. So that is really nice. It's based on your history. So this is a plugin here. This is really nice. Just copy the link and you will also find uh, an installation instruction here. How to install that, you can just uh, use this command here and that will automatically clone the repository and place this in your custom plugin folder. So just copy this here and enter this command here. And once this is cloned, you need to load this. So just open our zshrc file again. Let's add the zsh-autosuggestions. Write this file and now we need to also reload our terminal again. So let's ls our personal folder for example, uh, dot all my zsh. And we enter ls again, it will auto suggest us our last comment we have used and with the arrow keys you can just auto complete this. So this helps me a lot when using a terminal, so this is really nice, you can also add many many other plugins just google them find out some interesting things and try them out so this is basically a how you extend the boring terminal and transform this into something really awesome you can add so many powerful things you can customize anything you want and i think zsh is a really nice shell and you can also use this in an easy way with windows terminal and make this work properly with the windows subsystem for linux Okay guys, so I hope you liked this tutorial and you know how to make your Windows subsystem for Linux terminal just awesome with these nice extensions. So please also leave me a comment if you found out some interesting ZSH plugins that I probably should cover on my next videos or you just want to show me what you found out. And don't forget to hit the like button so this will help my YouTube channel grow. And also join our Discord server. This is still a relatively small community but it gets more interesting when more people are joining and just connect with people who share the same interests like you. Okay guys, so thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and I'll see you soon.